My name is Louisa Young, and I will be the moderator for this evening's forum. We want to thank the, the city of the town of Superior and Channel 8 for uh, broadcasting this and for their sponsorship. Um, I'd like to point out, first of all, that the League of Women Voters just turned 90. So this is an anniversary year for us, and we're very pleased to be able to provide this kind of a forum to help educate our voters. So we have several candidates here. There are two for mayor and six candidates for um, the town board, the trustee. Uh, there are three openings. The, um, the election is actually April 6th. We're going to start with two-minute opening statements, and then we're going to move into questions, and we're going to give each of you one minute to answer the question, and everyone will have the opportunity to answer every question. So um, those of you in the audience might want to know that you can't direct your question to just one candidate uh, and have only that person speak. Everyone is going to have the opportunity to talk. Um, the, um, and then we'll have two-minute closing statements. And um, I would invite you to pass on the questions if you don't have anything to say or if whatever has already been said reflects your position. If you uh, yield your time, then we can get to more questions. So um, the League, of course, is uh, a nonpartisan organization that promotes the active and informed participation of citizens in government. So with that in mind, we'll start with our opening statements. And I'm going to begin with Andrew Muckle. Okay. And then we'll move on down the list. Great. Thanks. Uh, good evening. My name is Andrew Muckle, and uh, as you're aware, I'm running for mayor. First, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who came to the meeting tonight, as well as the people watching on Channel 8. And I uh, also would like to thank the League of Women Voters for uh, hosting the event tonight, as you've done in the past. First, a little bit about myself. My w uh, wife, Michelle, and I lived in Superior for the past 14 years. Uh, we were both very excited about moving here, and I remember every week when we would drive up from where we were in Denver at that time, watching our house being constructed. Uh, this excitement uh, about moving here has changed to a deep felt appreciation for the community that is the town of Superior. As the town has grown, so has our family. We have three kids, Josh, Claire, and Joe, all students at one of our uh, excellent schools. While we will go into more depth this evening regarding specific issues, I believe that history is frequently predictive of the future. That being the case, I am proud of the record of the Board of Trustees for the past 12 years. During that time, much has changed within the town. Commercial development has placed us on a much stronger uh, financial footing. Acquisition of open space has preserved hundreds of acres of natural lands. Expansion of our parks has provided increased recreational opportunities for residents, especially our children. While much has been accomplished, there is still much left to be done. Because of my experience, I believe that I'm the best prepared to deal with future issues, both that we can anticipate as well as we can, those that we cannot foresee. Thank you. Okay. Now let's hear from Steve Smith. Thank you. Um, before I begin my discussion this evening, I want to thank my wife and my three children for supporting me during this campaign. Uh, it's been exhausted so far, but I'm enjoying it. I had no idea. Uh, the work that this takes uh, just a campaign, but I am enjoying the process. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking for your vote for the Mayor Superior. I believe that I bring something new to this town, and that is a strong business background. I want you all to know that I appreciate the Mayor and what the Mayor has done for this town, and I like the Mayor very much. I think it's just time for a new direction with us proceeding into more of a business-minded philosophy. So with that said, as your mayor, I will be using my listening skills that I use in my business every day to listen to the people of this town and follow the direction that they want to take the town in. Also take my leadership skills and work with the board to make sure that we head in a responsible economic uh, progression here to make sure that we expand out in a responsible manner protecting the beauty of our environment in Superior but at the same time, getting away from a tax base that is based solely or mainly on homes in the neighborhood. 
I'd like to see more business come to this town. I have a game plan to make sure that that business is a responsible growth, and I'll be talking about that more this evening. Thank you for your time. Okay, and now let's hear from Issa Skumatz. Very good. <laughs> well, I guess, gosh, I guess first I should thank my husband, Jim, and my dog. <laughs> but in any case, um, my name is Lisa Skumatz, and I'm running for town trustee. Um, in a nutshell, the really short piece is I believe civic service is a really important honor and opportunity and a duty, and we all should do our, our part. Beyond that, I'm good with budgets. I'm willing to dedicate the time, and I want to do everything I can to continue to enhance our really outstanding quality of life here in Superior and show, continue to show my pride in, our, in my community. More specifically, I've gained a lot of experience in the 10 years I've lived here and the last five and a half years that I've served on the board. And that time has given me an understanding of how towns work, our authorities, some important history and context, as well as a wealth of knowledge about what's going on and what the job really entails. Also, as a result of my town work and the nine or so committees that I'm active on, I've gotten to know elected officials in other towns and counties in ways that benefit our town, helping find funding opportunities, programs for our residents, various kinds of grants and grant participation, and a lot of other co-benefits. I think I've become better and better at finding ways to hear our residents. Regular coffee buzzes, surveys, walks and talks, and email methods, as well as business communication through my membership in the Chamber of Commerce and as a business owner here in town. Finally, there's still work I want to accomplish. Purchasing more open space, we've already purchased about 200 acres, but there's more to, to be done. Developing town center, working, and re working on retaining and um, enhancing current town businesses, finding safe and fun recreation opportunities for our kids, continuing to work to assure basic town services are delivered well and cost effectively, um, and improving strained communications that may exist between town and residents. I also want to work on trails connections, making the region-wide Morgul's weekend a, a real success, and a host of other priorities I'm sure we'll get to today. To accomplish this, I need your vote, and I would be honored to have it. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Sandy Pennington. I'm Sandy Pennington. My husband Dane and I have three sons, um, all of whom are Monarch High School grads and CU buffs, and we've lived here at seven and a half years. First, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. Too often it's said that the lack of public participation in this room shows apathy. I think that's incorrect. I feel it shows instead a lack of inclusion in the process. I'm a frequent participant in town board meetings, and I hear the same complaint over and over. Residents don't feel informed and they don't feel listened to. I read in the paper today that we candidates seem to agree on the issues. A declining tax base, failing businesses, and a lack of progress on the town center. These are very serious, but I believe the real issue is much broader in scope. It's the issue of leadership. I believe in open, inclusive, and informed government. I believe in leadership that is courageous enough to invite everyone to the table, hear all opinions, then make a decision. If we have that, then the issues can be readily addressed. I also believe in proper process. In simple terms, that means doing things in an order that brings about the best outcome. It means asking our constituents, you, first and acting second. It means having all the facts before making a decision. With these elements in place, we can address the important issues. How to preserve home values, how to grow responsibly, how, develop, how to develop a strong business base, and where to put our time and tax dollars. But it all starts with leadership, open, inclusive, informed leadership. I believe I can provide that for you. Thank you for being here. At and I'll ask for your vote. Thank you. Now let's hear from Ian Elverson. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian Elverson, and I'm running for town trustee. I'd like to start by thanking the league for putting this on and for everyone that came tonight and is listening on Channel 8. Um, I've been in this town for four years now with my wife and my now five-year-old son who goes to Superior Elementary. Um, in that time, I've really grown attached to this community. In the previous community I came from, there wasn't this sense of neighborliness that we have here, and I'd really like to help 
foster that. I started that a little over a year ago by joining the Rock Creek HOA. And that gave me a taste of getting involved in town issues. It also made me realize that I wanted a larger stage to, to help the town in general. And so with this opportunity came up, I'm jumping on it as a chance to uh, get involved and help Superior continue to be the, the place that me and my wife and my son really love living. So I hope you'll consider voting for me. Thank you. And next candidate we'll hear from is Chris Hansen. I also want to thank the League of Women Voters and all the residents that took the time to come here this evening and learn more about the candidates. My name is Chris Hansen. I live at 538 Eaton Circle. I've been in Superior for 12 years with my wife Ingrid of 13 years. We have two boys, ages 6 and 8, that both attend Superior Elementary School. We absolutely love living in Superior. I'm active in the community. I've organized community events. I'm active with my boys in their school and after school uh, activities. And I also participated in the Citizens Academy that taught us the basics of our municipality. I have an undergraduate degree in communications and an MBA in finance and accounting. For work, I'm a financial advisor and I'm also principal owner of an independent registered investment advisory firm based here in Superior. I chose to run for the Board of Trustees because I recognize the next two years are going to be critical for our town and we need to make sure that we move forward and on the right track. My platform is based on community first. Everything that the leadership of this community does and the residents do, we need to take notice of how it affects our community, both short term and long term. The needs of our town must be placed ahead of any special interest, personal agendas, and personal gains. We need to maintain a proper balance in all aspects of our community. We need to balance retention and development with open space acquisitions. We need to balance new projects and processes with effective communication to our residents. We need to balance how we manage Rock Creek and how we manage original town. And in order to achieve my goals, my plan is to engage the support first of the people and then leverage the natural synergies that the Board of Trustees and its committees have with the Chamber of Commerce and the HOA. Each of these groups have sufficient expertise that will uh, end, that in the end will benefit our community as a whole. And I ask for your vote on April 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're missing one candidate who may yet show up. Um, he wasn't able to be here on time, and that is uh, George Kupner. Uh, when he comes, if he does, then we will just let him join in, but he's obviously missed his chance to do an opening statement, but we'll let him join in on the questions if he gets here. Uh, and the other one is Nayaran Shreesh. Stress them. Sorry. Um, and let me apologize right now if I didn't pronounce that correctly, but <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, and he is, he's not coming tonight, we know that. So there is another candidate that um, those people who are here and watching the uh, television broadcast need to understand there's another candidate. So we'll move into questions now and you're going to have one minute each um, to answer questions. We have timers here, I'm sure you noticed, that will warn you when you're getting close to the end of your time. And for these questions, we're going to start and we're going to go this way so that we mix you up and then I'll start in the middle and we'll kind of mix things up so no, we don't always have the same person going first and the same person going last. So our first question is, what do you think that the top five issues facing Superior are over the next five years? Boy, top five. Um, I mean, the first one is retention of our businesses. If we go over to the Superior Marketplace, we can see uh, that there's a lot of vacancies there. So last count I had was there's 31 occupancies, 21 vacancies. And if we keep losing those uh, uh, retail businesses, we're going to lose our tax base. Uh, another issue is we need to have efficient planning and efficient processes on the board as we move forward. Um, also balance in everything that we do. It's important that we balance out the amount of businesses that we attract here, the, uh, the development that we attract here, that we maintain our long-term uh, open space goals. Thank you. Now, Ian Albertson. Um, I'll agree with Chris that the first one is definitely uh, retaining the businesses that we have in town now. I mean, this recession, there's a lot of competition between nearby communities, and we need to make sure that all of our businesses want to stay here and prosper here. 
Um, after that is trying to diversify that uh, business base, uh, develop the property over by the horizons, try and push forward the town center to uh, increase the, the types and number of businesses we have here. Um, after that is uh, continue open space purchases where we can. We still have some opportunities to add to our open space uh, inventory. Um, those are the ones that come to mind now, so I'll leave it there. Okay, thank you. Sandy Penningroff? Pennington. Pennington, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I agree with the other gentleman. Retaining business, definitely. Economic diversity, crucial. Um, if we had a diverse economy, it would be easier to keep shoppers in Superior and thereby bring more business to everybody. Responsible development would be next on my list. I believe we've got to pick, especially residential development, extremely carefully and make sure that what we are doing adds to the definition of what makes Superior great. Um, the, uh, Fourth one would be, of course, government process and leadership. They're critical to making everything else happen. If we've got strong leadership, we've got good process, we can accomplish the rest. I want to foster a common vision among all neighborhoods in the community so we're all working for the same goal. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. I think I touched on most of these in my opening statement, what I see as the top five issues. Number one is, I think, retaining businesses. I've proposed some things, including town, um, the town trustees meeting with each of the businesses in town to try to make sure we understand what are their issues, what kind of threats there might be to their su continued success. So I think retaining the existing businesses and crafting pol appropriate policy is important. I think moving town center forward to diversify the businesses that we've got in town is really important. I couldn't think that communication is more important. I think we've got some broken communication and some communication that works okay, but no stellar communication quite yet. I've been trying to work with that with, um, with walk and talks and, and the rest of that. Um, I think that's important. Quality of life is retaining our quality of life through two key issues. One is smart development, not overdevelopment. And the other is open space acquisition. I think that's really important for quality of life and the pride in our community. And the last, I think, is sensible services and making sure that we retain, that we have good services, library, recreation, and our basics, and cost effectively. Thank you. Steve Smith. Thank you. I don't think that we have five particular issues in this town. I think that we have some key issues that we need to focus on in this town and solve those first before we move on just trying to fill the numbers here. So my belief is that we need to start retaining our business by a reinvestment in the Chamber of Commerce, both financially and intellectually. And that is creating the Chamber of Commerce that not only supports the local businesses here, but helps educate them through other members in the Chamber. I think we need to tap into those resources. We have a ton of intelligent people in this community that can participate in the Chamber and help other businesses. I think that is one area we need to work on. The second area, we need to work on a tax credit for new businesses coming to this town so that we can attract new businesses to fill up the Superior Marketplace. We need to support Superior vendors. That is highly important. We need to finish the parks south of Colton in this community. They seem to be the forgotten end of the Rock Creek neighborhood. And then we need to bring Recycle Bank to the whole town. Thank you. That minute goes really quickly. <laughs> and it does go quickly, doesn't it? Andrew Muffle. Uh, diversifying our revenue stream is critical. Well, we're in a strong financial position at the uh, moment, despite the current economy. Uh, we are very dependent on a, a handful of retailers. We can just look across the highway and then we see what happens with a retailer who underperforms or if business closes. Either taxes go up or services are cut. Secondly, we need to secure our long-term water sources. For many years, the town leased water uh, supply to its residents. Portion of the town, when it took over the district, uh, purchased significant uh, high-quality water, but a significant fraction of it is dependent upon uh, the Windy Gap Firming Project, which is a multi-million dollar project, which will be coming to fruition here uh, shortly. Thirdly, while development is beneficial to the town's bottom line, it brings traffic and other impacts. We need to be cognizant of that and uh, mitigate those impacts as much as possible. Finally, I think the town needs to be a leader in environmental issues, purchasing open space, and I'm, my goal is to be the first municipality that is entirely energy neutral. Thank you. 
Okay, so for this next question, I'm going to start with Lisa Skumatz and come this direction. And the question is, what new initiatives would you advocate to broaden the town's economic base? Um, I think I put it in the response to the newspaper the other day, and it was that our town needs to diversify revenues and as a component get the town center vision implemented. In addition to new businesses through town center, I think it's critical to work on business retention as well. I've been pushing to have the trustees, perhaps in conjunction with staff or with the Chamber of Commerce, meet one-on-one -on -one to take the pulse of each of our current merchants. After these discussions, I think we can craft a sensible business retention policy and development policy and design incentives that will, um, with a greater understanding of what the businesses actually need. I believe this is a well -tailored, uh, that a well-tailored policy will retain and grow businesses and benefit all our residents. Thank you. Sandy Pennington? I think it's critical um, in terms of um, retaining business to aggressively promote a buy local campaign. Um, for example, shopping at Target rather than Walmart, shopping at Sports Authority rather than Dick's. When superior shoppers have the choice, they're not necessarily making it to stay local. Oftentimes we have to take our dollar out of town because we don't have that service, but we must aggressively support buying local. The second um, um, comment is simply that the town board has to create relationships with local businesses. We've got to create loyalty to Superior to make it more difficult for those businesses to make the choice to leave town. Relationships will create that loyalty, and I intend to try to make those. Thank you. Ian Elverson? Um, well, I have to pretty much agree with uh, Lisa Skumatz on her ideas for retaining business, so I'll save us some time for another question. Okay. Chris Hansen? Well, since we know that one of the goals is to retain and attract new businesses, we need to back up a little bit and set a plan in, forth, in, in, uh, in motion. And in order to do it effectively, we need to get the town board and its committees on board with the Chamber of Commerce and the HOA. The board can't do that alone. The Chamber of Commerce is the expert in businesses, not only locally, but we've got a national organization that supports the Chamber of Commerce. One of the goals of the Chamber of Commerce this year is to get more households in front of the businesses. So why not get the HOA involved with that? So that the HO because the HOA is the direct link to the households. Together, all three of those organizations can can put together a great plan. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Muckle. So uh, economic development, is, as I mentioned earlier, is really a key uh, diversifying our revenue. So this is the critical issue for the town right now. The problem is I'm a big believer in the free market, and there's very little things, honestly, at the end of the day that we can do to drive business to come to the town. We can provide the infrastructure. We can promote the town of Superior and have it a place where people want to come and live. Um, but it, it's somewhat limited, honestly, at the end of the day, what we can do. The town board recently has purchased some property in the town center uh, for the ice rink, but our hope is that that will help jumpstart part of the uh, development in that part of town. Um, and the town is aggressively uh, markets itself through the International Shopping Center conventions in, in Las Vegas that we go to regularly. Unfortunately, we're in the same boat that uh, probably 10,000 other municipalities are. So we do our best. We provide the infrastructure, have a great place that people want to come and work at. But at the end of the day, it is somewhat limited what we can do. Thank you. Steve Smith? So I agree with Sandy Pennington on the support of businesses wholly. I also agree with Chris, being the president of the HOA currently, that that makes common sense. In addition to those comments, though, I disagree with the mayor that we can do something actively to bring people to this town. First off, we can fill the 120 apartments over at the Horizons with new families. I suspect if they were to spend $20,000 in our community a year at a little over 3%, that would bring $79,000 of income into this community. In addition to that, I think we can tap into the University of Colorado students. That's 55,000 students going by on this highway on their way to school in the fall. So maybe we could put a detour sign to go through Superior Marketplace on the way. But I think that if we could get them to shop here and, and reach out to the University of Colorado, that would be 
excellent for this town. Long term, the town center needs to be built, but folks, we've got to build an infrastructure first. You need a retirement community. You might need a church out there so that people go and eat breakfast on their way through, and then maybe some ball fields that people come to this town and use. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so for this next question, we're going to start with Sandy Pennington, and we're going to go the other direction. Okay. And the question is, please give one example of a decision that was made or about to be made by the office that you seek that you would have made differently and why. Um, I sat through the entire development process for the Remington home development that is slated for between Original Town and Sagamore. I listened to the public hearings. I participated in the debate. I would not have voted at this time for that development to go forward. It is on an aquifer that is known to be very shallow. The people in Original Town already have flooded basements. By the way in which that aquifer would be diverted in order to be able to uh, build on that site, uh, it has the potential not only to dry the wells up upstream, but to flood the homes downstream and the basements of the new housing development itself. I felt the appropriate response would have been to have deferred the decision uh, uh, based on further investigation um, and have made it at a later time with fuller research. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. Gosh, there have been a lot of decisions that have gone through, and I, I'm, I guess the one that comes to my mind um, is the one that's one of the most recent, which may be a troublesome one to talk about, but it's the one that's come to mind. I want to talk about the library ballot issue. So the library ballot issue, um, I, I'm certainly, I'm terribly in favor of us having library services. I think it's critical for our um, young people, and um, I think it's great that adults need to be able to order books and all the rest of that sort of thing. But I didn't believe in the direction that our board picked in terms of locking us into Lo Louisville's library system for, uh, for the unknown future. Um, to me, I thought it was more important for us to say, let's be solidly with Louisville for two years while we ourselves craft what's the best option for our own citizens and um, allow some flexibility so that after two years we could stay with Louisville if that was the best choice or we could opt for something else, or join another library district or start our own library ask town center uh, developers to build a library for us and so on. I think it's been trickier for us to get out of it. We've never had a, a, an IGA with Louisville that in the end we really felt great about. So I guess that's, that's the main choice. I, I, I voted differently. Okay. Steve Smith. May I ask you to repeat the question, please? Sure. Please give one example of a decision that was made or about to be made by the office you seek that you would have made differently and why. You know, it, it's difficult in, in these uh, discussions not to, to get on the attack mode. I think that the, there's not one particular decision that was made. I think that the way that the leadership of the decisions that are made in this town is concerning to me. For an example, we see a vote that passes in this town one week and get changed in the following week. And I think that process is wrong. I also believe that the decision process in this town that they bring up an issue and vote on it the same evening needs to be changed. They need to set realistic expectations to the vendors and let them know we're going to discuss these decisions and then we'll look at voting it in the following meeting. That gives everybody an opportunity to think through the decision process and not have a knee-jerk reaction. Thank you. Okay. Andrew Muckle. I guess I'll wax slightly philosophic on this one. You know, I've, I've voted on many different things over the course of 12 years. Have agreed with the board on some. Have disagreed with the board on some. Uh, have agreed with previous mayors. Disagreed with them. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, uh, things, decisions regarding municipal operations are frequently are not frequently black and white. There's a whole bunch of shades of gray uh, that some uh, someone might might think is the best decision. Some might be completely opposed to it. And so, I, I'd have to say that you know I, I'm not really disappointed with the decisions or the votes that I've taken over the past 12 years, uh, but I think at the end of the day we have to um, just to agree to disagree on some of these things that we don't uh, all agree on. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris Hansen. I think the biggest, most recent issue that I see is uh, just the sign out front. Um, I don't think that it fits in with the town that well. 
I think it's a hazard uh, when we drive by and we view the sign that yet I tend to look back at it to see what was on there if there's something new. Um, we also, as I understand it, we hired from outside the community to build the sign and we should have probably hired from inside the community to keep the dollars here. Thank you. Ian? Uh, I guess the choice I would make would be the, uh, the land swap with uh, Remington for the land next to El Dorado K-8. While I certainly understood the, uh, what was trying to be accomplished, I just don't think it was ever going to succeed based on uh, the feelings of the people around there due to the uh, increased density of traffic, children at the school. I just don't think anyone was ever going to be happy with that, so that's what I would have voted against that. So the next question, we're going to start with Steve Smith and go this way. You're probably figuring out my pattern now. <laughs> and um, this is a question that is addressed to candidates who are on the Rock Creek HOA. Show of hands. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll ask this question, and then those of you who are not can tell me, if you were, what your position would be. In order to avoid any appearance of conflict of interest, would you resign your HOA board position if elected? Uh, I would resign my HOA board uh, position if elected without question, but not due to a conflict of interest. I think that trust, uh, uh, Ilya has done a great job uh, playing both roles. I believe, though, that the time commitment is too great to do a good job in both roles. So when elected mayor, I would resign from the HOA board with 60-day notification so that we have a smooth transition. Thank you. Okay. Lisa Skumatz? Um, I was on the HOA board, so I guess I can speak from quasi-whatever. Um, In any case, um, I actually don't see a conflict of interest either. It may not be a popular view, but I don't see a conflict of interest. I think everybody comes in wearing a variety of different hats, and the, the point is that you leave that hat at the door and you, you act in the position in which you're, you're standing in at that, at that uh, board. So I don't have a problem with uh, people being in on both boards as long as they respect that here we're acting for the town's good, somewhere else we're acting for another, uh, in another role. That's what I think is the appropriate situation. Okay. Thank you. Sandy Pennington? I'm not on the HOA, but I'll respond to this. Time is an extremely short supply. If an individual feels like they have the time, to do both and can uh, bridge the divide between those conflicting issues, um, I'll leave the decision up to them. Ian Ellington? I am on the, uh, the HOA board and I don't feel it'd be a conflict of interest. Actually one of the things which is uh, driving me to do this is to be on both organizations and help improve relations between the two which in the past have been rocky at times, to put it nicely. Thank you. Chris Hansen? If I were on the HOA board, um, I would resign. I think that would be a conflict of interest. But more importantly, I don't think you can wear both hats at the same time. I think you need to put focus on the HOA, which serves a whole different purpose, or you need to focus on the, the board of trustees. Thank you. Andrew Muckle? I guess I'd first uh, say that I uh, greatly appreciate the work of the members of the Rock Creek HOA, I think, which is the HOA we're speaking of tonight. They do yeoman's work, and it's a very difficult position to be in, honestly. I, I don't think that there's a technical conflict of interest between the two organizations, and I think that I personally have had, it's been mentioned that there's been rocky issues in the past. I, I think I personally work well with all the members of the HOA. Um, there are very rarely some issues where there might be conflict between the decisions that the Rock Creek HOA might make and the issues before the board and in that, those particular circumstances someone could uh, not participate in that discussion but uh, in general I don't think there's really a conflict. Okay. I've gotten through everybody right? Yes you have. Okay this time we're going to start with Ian Elverson and we're going to go to the right, to my right. Um, and the question is how do you feel about the land swap with Richmond Homes, for or against? Well, I covered that in a previous response, but as I, I mentioned, thought you might recognize <laughs> yeah, that issue. As I mentioned, I understood what the town was trying to accomplish, but I was against the swap due to the 
the reasons that the residents nearby that piece of land were against it. The increased child load at El Dorado K-8, the increased traffic in the area, the development process that would probably take five more years as evidenced by how Calamante is moving. So. Okay. Sandy Pennington. I'm uh, shocked if anybody in this audience doesn't know how I feel about the town. <laughs> The, uh, the swap. I led the stop the swap effort. I think that makes it clear. But I led it because of the extreme violation of the provisions of the Rock Creek PUD that said that it would always be maintained as public use no matter who owned the land whether the school owned the land, the town owned the land, or Richmond owned the land. It would re, uh, remain in public use. So I was vehemently opposed to swapping the land for economic purposes. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. Um, that was a long and, and drawn out discussion. And um, in order to try to get a sense of where the citizens were coming from on that, I did a survey to try to find out where, where um, people in town felt uh, were coming down on the on the issue. There were a lot of pros about the issue. I think it's really important for us to look to the long-term future and realize that McCasin is going to be a very important business corridor for town and a, and a town center sort of corridor. On the negative side, um, there were neighbors who, who were concerned about um, effects on their property values and effects on whether or not they had sort of a park feel that they felt they were getting from that location. I leaned a little bit more toward the swap than I leaned against it because of the long-term town. You know, looking 10 years in the future, I thought it was really important for town to be moving in a direction of making sure that we had a business corridor in on McCaslin. Okay. Steve Smith? You know, on the last question I just offered to the mayor that we could swap positions. He could be <laughs> president and I could be mayor, but that didn't go over so well. Um, you know, the land swap issue, it, it's simple for me. I don't, I don't think that the process was handled well. I don't think the notification was handled well. And I don't believe that there should be any development on that land. I've lived in this area for 43 years, and I've seen that area wash out time and time again in a, in a good rainstorm. I don't believe that that land is, is land that should ever be developed. I believe that it should be condemned and, and offered as open space or a nice park. So that's my position on the land swap. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Merkel. Mr. Smith and I have lived in the area of both uh, about the same length of time. I think I've been here for about 45 years. Uh, you know, I have to say that I was in generally in support of swapping the property uh, by El Dorado K-8 for the, for the area along Colton. And I guess this is a problem that I, this might be one of my weaknesses, but I take the long-term view on what I think is best for the community, uh, that I think that the impact upon residents small amounts of residential uh, development in that property uh, would not be too great and that the benefit for the town in the long term would be very beneficial to have the property on the Colton uh, McCaslin uh, corner. Uh, so I, uh, be, taking the long term, however, once again gets me into uh, hot water sometimes where I think that I'm trying to do what's best for the community. Uh, but then again, it's, uh, there's some negative political ramifications from that, so I was in favor of it. Thank you. Opposed. Opposed? Yes. Okay. Short and simple. Um, okay, so for our next question, I think we'll start with Andrew Muckle and we'll go around this way. Okay. The question is, do libraries still play a vibrant role in our lives? If so, is an annual expenditure of $250,000 to allow superior residents access to Louisville's facility justified? So I, I think that that's a, a great question. So uh, libraries play a vital service uh, for, I think, a, uh, an important uh, but small uh, portion of our populace. Uh, I can't see the town of Superior really ever building the library of itself uh, for itself. It's uh, too expensive on a capital construction, and it's too expensive for operations and maintenance. I think that libraries have really morphed into more community meeting space and really libraries, uh, that I think that most of the library services could be handled uh, in some other manner. So. I think the current ballot question makes sense where we can cooperate with the town of uh, with the city of Louisville to provide 
opportunities for the residents of the town of Superior in an economically reasonable way. Thank you. Chris Hansen? It's a tough question because my kids use that library. And when we weren't allowed to go f to it, uh, we had to make the trek up to Boulder. Um, I actually would vote against uh, providing money annually to the Louisville Library. And I'd rather see us put our efforts into, when we develop the town center, that we make a multi-use location. A library that our kids can go to, that we can do research at, but also a destination place where small businesses in the community can go and have meetings one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of home-based businesses here that could uh, uh, benefit from that. It could also be a much bigger place where organizations could go in and have perhaps Christmas events and uh, uh, businesses could go have holiday parties and whatever. I think it would be much bigger uh, than just uh, a regular library. Thank you. Ian Elberson? I think library services are very important for our community. With the number of children we have in this community, it's, you, know, you just can't do without a library. My uh, five-year-old goes to the library every two weeks and comes home with about 40 books that he has us read to him. And I hope he continues to do that all through school. Um, I would definitely support the, uh, the ballot issue coming up for the $240,000. Even if at some point we decide to build our own library, until then, we need library services. We're not going to build a library tomorrow. And so this ballot measure gives us the opportunity to either use Louisville's library for the you know, foreseeable future or just as a bridge until we build something. Sandy Pennington. I feel the library's role is absolutely vital. I uh, use the Louisville facility myself quite often. However, I would not vote for the mill levy on the ballot. I don't believe in escrowing in effect an expense. I want it reevaluated every year to make sure it's justified each year. As of now, I would say it's worth the 240000 However, I would like to see it as handled in other communities I've lived in where the people who use it actually pay for it, 50 or $75 a year per family who uses it so that not everybody has to pay it. Thank you. Lisa Skermatz. I think libraries are a really important thing, especially um, the most important service, I think, is children's and children's reading rooms. That sort of thing is <coughs> reading sessions, that sort of thing I think is really important. I think it's also important for adults to be able to order books and get books delivered to a place. Uh, as far as a community room, I think a community room is an important thing, but we've been able, to, but at my urging, as well as maybe others, I've, um, we've gotten a community room to be put in when Boulder Valley Eyes develops, so I'm feeling comfortable in that part of the thing. But, you know, if you look at it, but, um, Broomfield and Boulder's libraries are only one minute further from, from um, than Louisville's library. I think it's, um, as I mentioned before, my preference would have been to have a limited time in, in Louisville and then move forward on, and craft what's the best option for us, whether it's town center or somewhere else. I don't like being a free rider. I think library services are really important, and if, we're, if we want those services, we need to pay for them. I am in favor of free libraries, I mean, not user pay libraries at that point. I don't think that's the right way to go. But I do think that it's important for us to, to move forward. I think we should vote for this library issue, and then Thank hopefully you. we'll come up with a better issue and Thank you. move a different direction. Sorry, your time is up. I'm done. Steve Smith. So I think times are changing. I'm watching my children using the Internet more and more to find their resource uh, information. Uh, I enjoy reading. I think that the greatest relaxation uh, in the world is to sit down and read a book sometimes. So I, I do like libraries, but I think it's a more responsible economic decision to try and uh, annexation in our area and to see how the future holds libraries. I, I think that Chris's idea about community centers is well-founded, and I think that Sandy's uh, statements about the responsibility of the uh, economics of this are, are well-founded. So. Again, I think that, that a library is, is interesting, but I think that based on the fact that we're 10,300 people, maybe an annexation is the way to go. Even the mayor, when he uh, uh, grew up in the uh, Table Mesa area, knew that. And that was an annexation up there when he was growing up. So it worked just fine for us back then. Thanks. Thank you. OK. With the next question, I'm going to start with Chris Hansen and go around this way. And the question is, what is your feeling about Superior's open space funding and priorities? Well, it should definitely remain to be a priority uh, long term for Superior. 
But in order to fund open space the way we would want it, we need to have the money to do it. So we need to actually focus on our businesses here first to make sure that we have uh, maintain a tax base. We know that 63% or so of our, our tax uh, revenue comes from small businesses, and if we keep losing small businesses, we're going to lose that tax base and we're not going to be able to purchase open space. So I think we need to prioritize first making sure that we have ample tax base here and then focus on our open space. Thank you. Ian Elverson? Um, I'm definitely in support of continuing our uh, purchasing of open space. I agree with Chris Hansen that we need to uh, work on our tax base so that we can keep the open space fund well funded so that we can continue to do that. Thank you. Sandy Pennington? As a um, somewhat frequent hiker in the right weather, I love my open space and I would suggest it remain a priority. However, right now I'm more devoted to parks. Uh, not at the exclusion of open space, but I'd like to see some of our parks finished. Town 9 is unfinished. I believe the swap acreage next, uh, uh, next El Dorado K-8 should be developed um, according to the Rock Creek PUD as a nice park south of Colton. Um, and there's another park in the works, the, the three parks issue. So I'd actually like to see in the extremely near term some finishing going on on that work, but definitely a long-term commitment to open space. Thank you. Lisa Skomets? Hi, I've been an open space supporter from way back and on the various committees that have tried to move open space forward. Um, I believe um, my, my priorities are, are in line with things like, I think I'm more in favor of large parcels that preserve views. Um, rather than small infill parcels, but unless they're along creeks or, or have riparian way, ways of, of, about them, trying to preserve the, the um, wilderness and the, and the places for the um, animals to live. The problem is that we need willing sellers for properties that we want, and, and I'm willing to, to hold out and keep badgering people until they become willing sellers, and I guess that's the sort of direction I, I want to go. I want to keep hold out for our best sites and make sure we have the money to, to jump on them when they become available. I think they're one of the number one critical things, open space is one of the number one critical things that we need to maintain what's per perceived as a really strong quality of life, keep our views, which is a very attractive feature and one of the key features to our property values here in town. I think I, I couldn't be more in favor. Thank you. Steve Smith? So when I grew up in this area, this whole area was open space. There was, there was original town. Uh, and I do, I appreciate the open space. I'm, I'm a country boy at heart. I ran around in these fields growing up and just for hours on end running through these fields, so I love it. Uh, it it's one of the things that uh, endears the mayor to this town. He's done a great job with the open space. But the cycle is, is going through a change right now. The economy's tougher, and we need to really focus on the business right now. So we have to maintain the beauty of our open space. We have to protect what we have. But well, now we've got to change this with the cycle and move into the business mind. And, and I think that that's what uh, is what we need to hold through now for the next few years. Thank you. Okay. Andrew Merkel? Well, well I think uh, people are uh, well aware that I'm a strong supporter of open space. I appreciate the open space plan that Boulder uh, initiated and Boulder County initiated way back then. It's been a, an incredible asset uh, to the region in general. Uh, Superior has picked uh, – has uh, – um, uh, come into that somewhat lately, but we have a now a dedicated revenue stream from our sales tax, and we have several million dollars in the bank uh, dedicated purely for open space. Once again, we're uh, as Trustee Skumatz mentioned that we need to have a willing seller, uh, and I'm hoping that there would be at least one large parcel that we could acquire with the uh, money that we have in the bank. I've been working with the Rocky Flat Stewardship Council and the Natural Natural Resource Damages Fund to help. Uh, augment our open space funds and but once again we've had a hard time with willing sellers I'm actually becoming somewhat more open to having a small parcel acquisition that might benefit uh, residents both in original town as well as Rock Creek from development thanks thank you and I realized part way through that I went the opposite direction oh. that I said I was going to so I'm <laughs> going to do that over <laughs> we'll start with Chris this time and go to Andrew and then around that way okay, okay. So the next question is, is a town center still a viable future prospect for the town of Superior as currently conceived? 
Well, the last plans that I saw, I thought were a good starting point, and absolutely is it's viable. I think we need to move forward with it. We need to make a decision. We need to include uh, the residents. We need to have more open forms on the town center. Uh, we need to have forms at Superior Elementary, at El Dorado. Uh, we need to have forms at Horizon so we get more of the community input into it, not just having the forums here. Um, so absolutely, we need to move forward on that. Thank you. Andrew Merkel. I think as Mr. Hansen mentioned, I, th I think it's a good starting point. Uh, I believe the retail sales market, however, is, is greatly changing. We had large amounts of retail sales tax generation uh, dedicated on the town center vision. With the internet, uh, with competition with our other municipalities in the region, I think that that's going to be very difficult to fill in terms of retail sales tax. I'd love to see actually increased amounts of commercial property that might be business office or even potentially uh, small amounts of light, light industrial, light manufacturing, uh, because I think that we're going to have a tremendously difficult time trying to uh, fill, you know, 200,000 square feet of retail sales tax generating property. Okay. So I believe that the uh, town center is a very important issue. I, I think that its current idea needs to be changed a little bit. We need to build some infrastructure around it first. I think a retirement community, again, and different things that would draw people to a town center need to be built so that you have that infrastructure so you can support the businesses you eventually put in there. I think that Mr. Payne has done a uh, tremendous job in this town on his advisory council and I think that the key thing that this board needs to do is tap into those people that are advising us. They are the ears to the world in this town and we need to keep our identity folks. We're 10,000 people and I think that that's important and the reason we all live here. So as long as we keep that identity of 10,000 people and don't try and be 30,000 people, we can build a town center and we can do it responsibly. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. I think it's a, a, a nice design. I like the design quite a lot because I like it's got a very appealing mix of features, and I think that's a really important part. We never will have an old historic downtown area because we don't have that to start with. I think the mix that they've designed makes a lot of sense. It has some commercial space, including some office and some retail. It has public space and public meeting sort of things, and that's part of the plan. It has sort of open areas, meeting, walking, flowing sort of plans and plazas and that sort of thing. It has rooftops to support some of the businesses, which I think are very important. It also has um, uh, infrastructure and the retirement area is part of the sort of all, all the, the plan over there. Um, it also it, it helps us get development of McCaslin and the, the crossover between original town and that across McCaslin and come and hopefully getting us to be able to walk across um, that busy street and it helps join neighborhoods. I think it's not going to happen right now or next year or that, you know, very soon. It may, be, it may need a little tweaking with design, but I think it's a solid plan. Thank you. Sammy Pennington. Um, to build on what Lisa said, I love the concept of mixed use, mixed residential. I think that is uh, very important to have. However, the economy has changed the equation. Two things I, I would like to see. One, revisioning. We need to bring back uh, community leaders, com uh, members of the community, realtors, business leaders all to the same table to see how relevant it still is and to modify it as necessary. Most importantly, anything we that do there has to preserve current home values. Our first loyalty is to current home owners, not future home owners. Thank you. Um, I agree that the town center is uh, viable and should be pursued. I think the, the plans we have now are an excellent starting point, but I also agree with the mayor that you know, the economy is changing with the recession and just the advent of the internet for uh, e-commerce that we may have to reevaluate the business mix if we can't get the retailers in there, but I definitely think we need to go ahead with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see how much time we have. Um, well, I have one here that might be worth two minutes per answer. And um, let me think how to start this. I guess we'll start with Sandy Pennington and we'll come around this way. And, the, and the, you'll have two minutes to answer this. What makes you uniquely qualified for running for elective office 
and what changes will you make for the town of Superior? Um, I have the academic credentials and the work credentials to do what I say I will do. I, I have uh, 25 years experience in strategic planning, marketing, analysis, market economics, which is all very relevant to what, what uh, um, the challenges are in this town. I've also made it my uh, business but via the leadership of the Stop the Swap campaign. Once we succeeded in that, I have spent the past year plus um, being involved totally in the town board process at the planning commission, at ProStack, at the town board meetings. I've become sort of a fixture. I'm not sure they're very glad to see me here. But what makes me different is really my commitment to effective leadership an effective process. All the rest fades if we don't have effective leadership and effective process. But with it, we can solve every problem. We can solve business development. We can solve uh, residential development. We can solve any problem. I think I bring that to the table. Thank you. Ian Elberton. Well, I've been in uh, corporate operations for 10 years now, which has exposed me to uh, all the different aspects of how a business runs. And I think I can really use that to bring this to this job. Now, of course, the public sector and the private sector can be very different. But I think the public sector can always use a little dose of the private sector. Um, I really love this community. I'm very involved from my time on the HOA. I'm willing to put in whatever time is necessary to get this job done. Um, and I think just my problem-solving skills I'm very pragmatic, so I don't get caught up in any kind of ideology on getting stuck on one side of a problem. I just want to get the best for as many people as possible. So I think I'd be able to uh, be a solid, solid trustee. Thank you. Could you repeat Chris the Hansen? question, please? Sure. What makes you uniquely qualified for running for elective office, and what changes will you make for the town of Superior? Well, what makes me uniquely qualified is my business background. Um, I worked uh, in marketing and sales for in the hair care industry for many years, but uh, recently uh, became a financial advisor. This is what I do daily is I create budgets, financial planning. Um, what I would change is I would, like I mentioned in my opening uh, statement, that I would bring the key organizations together, the Board of Trustees and its committees, the HOA, and the Chamber of Commerce. Every one of those has something unique to offer to this town, but when we work against each other, we don't get anything done. But if we work together, we can get a lot done. Thank you. Andrew Merkel? I'd love to say that I'm uniquely qualified to run for the uh, mayor position. I'm not uniquely qualified to run for the mayor position. We have fantastic people in the town of Superior that 100 people could uh, run as a mayor. I think the distinction that I might have is that I've been, been here doing this for the past 12 years. Uh, a lot has been accomplished since that time. The marketplace has been opened. The retail sales tax generation has gone up. Uh, open space has been purchased. South Pool has been conceived and built. Um, uh, our financial footing is on a much better situation. We've uh, consolidated the districts. We've lowered operational expenses. Uh, and I think that we've, we've done a good job. And I think I have the history and the historical perspective to bring that to the table. I think that's frequently very beneficial, but you know, I guess I'm not tooting my own horn by saying is that you know, there's Superior is a great place to live. There's a whole bunch of great people here, and I think that many people could uh, to, could do this job. So, thank you. Thank you, Steve Smith. So I think the single most important thing that gives me the strength uh, to do this job is my faith. So I fall hev heavily back on that because it helps guide me to make good quality decisions. It helps me to listen to people and it helps me to sit back once in a while and say, you know what, there's a better opinion than your own. And I think that the, the being humbled that way through my life and being able to work with people is what makes me uniquely qualified. I don't have to put what I think is best out in front and demand that it be done that way. I am able to be flexible, I'm able to listen, and if somebody is making good sense to me, then I'm able to stop, listen, and change the direction that I'm headed in 
if it makes more sense than I'm doing by myself. I don't have all the answers, folks, but I can listen to people in this community that are smarter than I am in some instances to help me get down that road. And I think that's what makes my ability to be mayor unique. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. Thanks. I had a two-part question, so I'll still hit the first part first, which is how am I uniquely qualified? Well, again, maybe we're not so unique, but in any case, we're running for office. So um, I've served as trustee since October 2004, and I, then I had the honor of and the respect of my colleagues and got appointed mayor pro tem um, after that. That I've got a lot of experience and many years of, of experience here working with, with this town board. I also have a lot of different hats that I wear and I can put myself into the roles and understanding of the, of the variety of constituencies that we have here in town. I'm an active and successful business person here right in town and I'm also, I, there may be other members of the Chamber of Commerce but I, I, I know I've been an active me member of the Chamber of Commerce for many years and I think it's really important to get that input as well and I do have that, that ear as well. I'm, um, I was on the HOA, so I understand the issues related to the HOA, and I was on the Intergovernmental Committee um, for the HOA when we talked about merging town, so I have that, bring that history. Um, I, I, uh, I've been, the whole time that I've been on the board, I've been very involved, and I do my homework, and I'm on about 10 committees and subcommittees related to that, and I, I pay attention to each one, and I try to bring back what I can from that for the, for the benefit of the, of the town, as well as make sure that Town of Superior um, gets as much as it can out of these relationships as well. I try to leverage where I can. Second, my education is I'm an economist. And I'm really good with budgets and I'm very efficient as well and I really can look at the costs and benefits of all the kinds of issues that come before town. I bring that and I think that was one of the things I, was mo I ran on most um, heavily when I, was, when I ran last time. Third, I've been very active and trying very hard to make sure that we have great communication in town. I've worked harder than anybody to listen to everybody and have public places where people can uh, access me once a month at least. I would make only tweak the second part of the question. I would only tweak things. I'd have more informal meetings, communicate more, um, I'm have sorry. us all be members of the chamber, but I think it's well managed. You'll have closing statements pretty soon and you can <laughs> go on if you like. Um, okay, this time we're going to start with Ian Elverson, and this will be our last question, then we'll move into closing statements. So, Ian, and then we'll come back around this way. How would you deal with our economic reality? Do you have ideas to broaden Superior's econo economic base? Are there still new ideas to be tried? Um, well, I can't say that I have any magic bullet ideas off the top of my head. Um, I know there's already talk of starting an updated incentive plan to keep businesses here and help encourage other small businesses to join. Um, continuing to push forward on the areas that we've already targeted for additional economic development, such as the town center or by the horizons over Cal Monte. And that's what I have right now. Okay, thank you. Sandy Pennington. I would like to start that conversation with um, the local businesses we do have. Obviously, some are in tre tremendously difficult straits. I really like what I'm hearing from Chris. I do believe it's got, we've got to bring every party to the table, and certainly the chamber and the HOA and the trustees and mayor working in collaboration with business leaders, perhaps we can affect the decision. It's amazing when I went to IHOP over the weekend, simply having that young man wave the sign that kids eat free. IHOP was filled with families with small children. A lot of times problem solving doesn't take the big, difficult resolution. A lot of times it's a step, series of smaller steps that we all can affect such as buying local, that can make the difference in allowing a business to weather the tide. I believe in bringing us all to the table. Thank you. Lisa Skumatz. I addressed this question of, um, in one of my first uh, elements, but I, I guess I'll try to tweak that a little bit in saying, one, I think it is important that we talk with all the businesses, and the town trustees ought to do that. And as I mentioned, in conjunction with either the staff or the chamber or on our own, I think that the, those are all potential collaborators. We, we should have no surprises about what's happening with our businesses. Um, and we should have no surprises if we're being coached by other towns and that sort of thing. 
The chamber is really important. I've been active. I think it's really important for us to stay active and use that to, as, a, as a way to reach out to other businesses. We have chamber meetings with other chambers as well. We, that's, that's to our benefit. Um, I, we, we ran, the town's uh, Resource Conservation Committee ran a buy local, buy green ca um, campaign two years when I was on that committee. That was uh, about five or six years ago. And I thought we had, we made some progress. It should certainly be expanded. I, I, would, I would say that we should bring that back. Thank you. Steve Smith. So I was researching other towns to see what they're up to, and I saw that the city of Lakeland has put together a great package for their businesses. It's called uh, Small Businesses, Big Business in Lakeland. And this, this is very intriguing because they talk about a small business development center, and they've already formulated that. It's pr almost perfect, and it'll fit within our model, and that's how you can broaden the businesses around here. And the other thing we forget about in this town is we always think about the superior marketplace. There are some wonderful companies in this town that you don't see driving by. Ugly duck, Duckling Soap, uh, that's an example of a business here in Superior where it's homemade soap. I mean, this company is awesome and the people that run it are great. And there are a lot of businesses in Rock Creek, Original Town, Sagamore that we've forgotten about. And we need to start remembering that those businesses are there as well. Thank you. I agree that supporting the uh, local businesses is uh, helpful. You know, we all are in part of the global economy, so we're all affected uh, by it to a great degree. Uh, but supporting it through the chamber, as we have in the past, I think is helpful. We have actively uh, market ourselves in the national stage uh, to look for additional retailers. I'd love to see an incubator uh, opportunities for small businesses to help uh, grow their business locally. Uh, I think that that has significant opportunities. So uh, some of this is outside of our hands. We can do what we can, and once again, uh, I think the most important thing is that we keep Superior the place that people want to live at, have the high quality of life, and make it uh, distinctive from other communities so people actually want to come and live here. I think that we've done that through some of our uh, 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 events, Chili Cook-Off, the Morgul Classic, I think will be very beneficial in putting us on the map, and I'm hoping that we'll become uh, the first municipality who would be electrically uh, energy neutral, I think that that's going to be a great selling point for the town of Superior. Thank you. Last, we'll have Chris Hansen. Thank you. Well, I certainly don't have the answers, all the answers. Uh, I do have some ideas on how we could drive business into the local businesses and bring businesses here. But again, I go back to tapping into our resources here, and that is the Chamber of Commerce, but also the HOA. I know that the town manager and the mayor go to a trade show every year to court new businesses. Well, we need to have the Chamber of Commerce go with them. They speak the same language. They have the plans to, to bring businesses here. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to come to closing statements. And I think we could go with three minutes. Or... Well, look, we'll stick with two. That's what we told you. We'll stick with two. <laughs> um, and I think we'll start with the um, City Council or the Town Board of... Um, trustees with Lisa Skumatz and then we'll come back and pick up the mayors at the end of our closing statements. So Lisa Skumatz, are you ready? Sure. I think public service is really important. I would re really be honored to continue to serve in that role. I've served as trustee for five and a half years. I've lived here for ten years and I think I bring a lot of background and experience and extremely strong uh, relationships with with my other trustees as well as the regional governments. As I mentioned, one of my key issues is the town's diversification of revenues and trying to get new businesses to be attracted as well, and I've given my theories for how I think that ought to be uh, carried forward. But there are other important issues to me as well. Continuing to set aside open space to retain and enhance quality of life and property values here in town. Improving communication with residents. I've tried a number of techniques for doing that, and I continue to try new ones. Coffee buzzes, walks and talks, and surveys, and other things. We have more work to do, work to do on that, and I think there should be an emphasis on good listening and very polite interaction. Um, one of my continuing areas of emphasis has been fiscal responsibility, increasing our efficiencies in providing services, including potentially libraries, and definitely including parks and recreation, to our residents at the best possible cost. Additional topics that interest me, include, beyond the usual, are expanding Superior's participation in the Climate Smart Loan programs, where citizens can get energy savings at a very low cost from a very innovative program. 
um, and also helping make the Morgul Bike Weekend event a success and a growing regional draw. To accomplish this, I need your vote. I promise to continue to communicate, continue to be prepared and to consider all sides, and to do my best and vote my best conscience for the good of the town. I ask for your vote and would be honored to have it. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy Pennington. This election has the power to be transformational, both in the way Superior sees itself and the way we get things done, but we have to make that choice. By electing leaders with vision and courage and an inclusive attitude, we can put Superior on a new course, a course where you have a very important seat at the table. If you choose vision, courage, and inclusion, I believe everything else, fiscal responsibility, business development, responsible growth, and all of the other issues we're sure to face can readily be addressed. By collaborating with existing businesses, we can help them survive. By collaborating with new businesses, we can attract them to our community. By collaborating with homeowners, we can preserve home prices. By bringing all neighborhoods within Superior to the same table, we build a strong sense of community, one with a common vision, one we can all support. And we utilize one of Superior's most valuable resources, the tremendous brain power in this community. You have six choices for trustee. Our view of the issues is somewhat familiar, but our style of leadership is totally different. I believe I can provide the open, inclusive, informed leadership you're asking for. If you'd like to learn more about me, go to PenningtonListens.com. Meanwhile, I ask for your vote on April 6th. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Ian Elbert. Um, I'm running in this race to add a sense of civic duty. I think everybody in the community needs to get involved to make the community better. And I think my background and interest in government makes me somewhat uniquely qualified or uniquely interested in sitting up here. Um, while I don't have a specific set of issues that I'm ready, you know, ready to champion on day one, I do promise to do my research on all the issues and have very informed votes when the time comes. I also promise to listen to all the residents of Superior. Uh, we have many smart people in this town, and it's a sometimes underutilized information source for making the best decisions. Um, as I said before also, very pragmatic, and will just do my best to get the best possible solution in the shortest amount of time. And hopefully you'll consider voting for me. Thank you. Chris Hansen. I want to thank the League of Women Voters again and everybody who attended tonight. The Town of Superior needs to have proper balance in every program, project, and initiative that we undertake. From effective communication to our residents, to moving forward with our open space objectives, to retaining and attracting businesses, to responsibly moving forward with the Town Center. In order to best reach these goals, we must reach out to the local organizations and individuals that are focused and have expertise in our initiatives. We need to operate as an open book and press forward with diligence and efficiency, all in the interest of our community. Based on my business experience, my integrity, and drive, I have the tools necessary to effectively and efficiently manage and lead our town. On April 6th, I ask for your vote. You will be represented well. Thank you. Thank you. And then the two mayor candidates, so Andrew Muckle. Okay. It's been my great good fortune to represent the residents of the town of Superior for the past 12 years. I have to say that I've really enjoyed the working relationships that I've had with the former, uh, current trustees, former trustees, previous mayors. It really says uh, volumes about the people that live here, and I think that uh, it's really been a wonderful opportunity for me. Um, I, I think that from my perspective is that there's some important decisions that will be made in the next few years. I think I bring a historical background that it will be helpful in these conversations. So I'm hoping that you will consider me for your vote. I would like to thank the League of uh, Women Voters once again for hosting tonight's events and I would uh, uh, thank the residents for coming here and participating in this process. I think it's been an interesting and illuminating uh, evening and it's clear that we don't I'll agree on all the issues, uh, but I know that all candidates here are really uh, stepping up to the plate to do, to make Superior a better place in what their vision is. 
Uh, that being said, I believe that my experience gives me the best historical perspective to help the, uh, lead the town for the next four years. On a personal note, I'd like to uh, thank all my friends, neighbors, and uh, family for their support. It's been uh, very gratifying. But uh, no matter who you uh, think best represents your viewpoint, I encourage everybody to vote on April 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Smith. So congratulations, League of Women Voters, on 90 years. Uh, I also would like to thank the mayor for his dedicated service to our town. I represent a new direction in this town. I represent a way of focusing on business and a tighter economy and bringing more income back to the town. The cycle's changed, folks. It's time to look more towards business right now. There'll be a time to go back towards open space as the primary goal in the future. And I think that we need to keep that in mind as we progress in building the businesses around here. I'm lucky that I get to count my friends in all the boroughs of Superior. I have friends in original town and Sagamore and Rock Creek and all over the town. And that's, that's the fortune of being in a community for so long and being in an area for so long. And I will represent all of those communities. The thing that I want to key on as mayor is to focus on the fact that this is the town of Superior. It's not a bunch of individual boroughs. When I grew up, it was a town of Superior, and I'd certainly like to leave office with this being the town of Superior and bring it together. So I thank you all. I would appreciate your vote on April the 6th, and everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, that concludes our candidates forum for tonight. And so on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank everyone for coming. I hope you've been enlightened. Uh, I know I have. And um, we again want to thank the Town of Superior and Channel 8 for their support in broadcasting this. And I wish you all a good evening. And I hope you will all be out to vote on mm. April 6th. Thank you.